Hi there, welcome back. Today we will create a cube transition template in DaVinci Resolve 18. As you see here, the transition works like rotating a cube, the front face goes out of the view as the side face rotates in. It also has a reflection of the cube at the bottom. To create a custom transition, we always start with the simple fusion cross dissolve. Right-click the transition block and choose Open in Fusion page. In the node editor, two media in nodes connect to the cross-dissolve transition group node. Media in 1 is the first clip in the timeline, which is the outgoing clip. And media in 2 is the second one, the incoming clip. The video transitions from media in 1 to media in 2. As we are going to build a cube transition, the very first idea is to use a cube 3D tool. Click the background of the node editor to make sure nothing is selected. Press shift space to open the tool selection window. Find and insert a cube 3D node to the editor. It has one scene input in yellow color and six other inputs representing each face on the cube. Press one or drag it to the left view and we can see the cube in the 3D viewer. To complete a basic 3D scene setup in a fusion composition, we need a renderer 3D node to render the result as 2D output. Connect the cube 3D to the renderer node, bring the renderer 3D node to the right viewer, where we can see the final result of the 3D scene. Hold the Option or Alt key while dragging the media in one's output to the cube node. Release the button and choose the front from the list. In the left viewer, we see the image is placed on the front face of the cube. But it's kind of yellowish. Select the cube 3D node and go to the material tab in the inspector. Make sure the front face is selected. Change the diffuse color to white. The image color on the cube front face is now back to the original but the image is squeezed to fit the cube in square shape. That's because of the cube dimension, we need to change it to match our frame aspect, which is 16 by 9. With the cube node selected, go to the Transform tab in the inspector. Unlock the X or Y or Z option in the Scale section. Change both X and Z values to 16 divided by 9. Now it looks good. But if we compare the result on the right side with the one on the left, we notice that the final result is cropped a bit on the sides. Because the default viewport is too close to the cube, we just need to reduce a little bit of the Z value in the translation. Minus 0.096 seems to be the right value to get this corrected. Similarly, we connect the second clip to a side face. If we want to rotate the cube to the right and reveal the clip, we can connect it to the left face. To restore the original color, go to the Material tab, change the diffuse color of the left face to white. We now have a cube with the first clip on the front and second one on the left. In the Transform tab, the cube rotates as we change the rotation Y value. Changing the Y from 0 to 90 will rotate along the Y axis, spin out the front face, and turn the left face to the front. To animate the parameter, right click and choose Modify with Anim Curves. Switch the Modifiers tab. Change the scale to 90. This Anim Curve modifier will automatically calculate the value from 0 to 90 as the clip plays. This is cool, but the animation is a little bit boring. Go to the Transform tab. Modify the Translation Z parameter with Anim Curves. In the Modifiers tab, change the scale to minus 1, offset to minus 0.096, which is the offset we set for the final result. By default, the linear curve sets the distance from the offset to minus 1, which zooms out the image at the end. But we want the image to start from full size, zoom out a bit, and back to normal. 
so we change the curve to custom. Click the middle of the curve line to add a control point. Change the in time to 0.5. Set the value to 1. This means when the playhead is in the middle of the clip, it sets the value to minus 1 and zooms out the image. Select the end control point in the mini spline editor. Change the value to 0, this sets the result size value back to the starting offset, which transforms the image back to full size. OK, now it's much better. To add a reflection layer as we saw in the preview, we make a copy of the Cube 3D node. Click the background of the node editor to make sure nothing is selected. Press Command Shift V or right click to paste an instance of the Cube node. Connect the media in nodes to the front and left face of the instance cube. Merge it with the original cube node. A merge 3D node is automatically inserted. While the merge 3D node is still selected, press 1 or drag it into the left viewer. It looks like nothing changed. That's because the two cubes are identical. Select the instance cube. Go to the Transform tab in the Inspector. Right-click the Translation Y parameter and choose D instance. Decrease the Y value to bring down the cube, so it's separated from the main cube. Great, now we have two cubes rotating together. But we want the bottom one to be the reflection, which should have the upside-down images and a darker appearance. To do that, drag a Transform node from the toolbar Move over to the line connecting the media node and cube. Release the button when the line is highlighted, which automatically inserts the transform node before the cube node. Go to the inspector and flip the image vertically. Repeat the step to flip another image. All right, the only thing left now is to darken the image. Select the instance cube. Go to the Material tab in the Inspector. Let's disable the checker underlay for better reviewing the result. Select the front face. De-instance the opacity. Decrease the value to 0.3. But we are now seeing the inside of the cube, which we don't need. Go to the Controls tab. In the Visibility section, check the back option to hide the inside. I think this is good. Back to the Material tab. Select the left face. De-instance opacity. Set the value to 0.3. Everything looks good, except this blue top face is still visible. Select the top face. Set the opacity to 0. This time we don't need to de-instance the top face, because it is not visible from the top cube. OK, we have done the cube transition using Cube 3D tool, this seems to be easy and straightforward, and also makes sense. But I feel it's a bit too much. When I play the transition effect, I can see that it's a bit slow and laggy. Next let's see how we can create this effect using the DVE node, which is a much lighter tool than those 3D ones. Right-click the Dissolve node group. Choose Ungroup from the menu. To make the editor cleaner, we can select all the 3D nodes, press Command G, or right click to create a group. Name the group Cube 3D Transition. Click the background to clear the node selection, press Shift Space to open the tool selection window. Find and add a DVE node to the editor. Shift drag the node. Move over the connection line between Media in 1 and Dissolve node. Release the button when the line is highlighted, the node is now inserted automatically between these two nodes. Since this is the outgoing clip, we will use the DVE control to rotate it out of the screen. Drag the DVE node to the left viewer, so it's easy to see the transforms we will be doing. Drag the Media Out node into the right viewer. Select the DVE node. Go to the Inspector, right-click the Rotation Y parameter. 
Choose Modify with Anim Curves. Switch to the Modifiers tab. Change the scale to 90. As we move the playhead to end, the clip spins by 90 degrees. It doesn't feel like a cube rotating. Go back to the Tools tab. Change the Z pivot to minus 0.5, which sets the rotating point back by half the clip width, like the center of a cube. But this also pushes the image closer to us, the image is like being zoomed in. To compensate for the pivot change, modify the Z move with expression. Drag a pick whip from the add button to the Z pivot parameter to auto populate the expression with parameter name. Change the expression to 1 minus Z pivot. This looks good now. Select the DVE node, press Command C or right click to make a copy. Click the editor background, press Command Shift V or right click to paste an instance of the DVE node. Shift drag to insert it after media in 2. Drag the new DVE node into the left viewer. Since we are simulating a cube rotation to the right, the incoming clip is the left side face. We will rotate it to the front from minus 90 to 0 degrees. Go to the Controls tab in the Inspector. De-instance the Rotation Y parameter. Enter equals in the Edit field, press Enter to enable simple expression. Set the expression to DVE 1.Y rotation minus 90. As the DVE 1 rotates from 0 to 90, this expression will change the Y rotation from minus 90 to 0. This is great, we now have simulated a cube rotation using DVE nodes. But it lacks some of the dynamic effects like we did with the 3D nodes. First we want to add the size change as the cube rotates. This can be achieved by animating the Z move parameter. Select the DVE 1 node. Remove the expression for the Z move parameter. Right click and choose modify with expression. Instead of a simple expression, this adds an expression modifier. Go to the modifiers tab. Modify the number in 1 with a simple expression 1 minus DVE 1 dot Z pivot. Right click number in 2 and choose modify with anim curves. In the anim curves section, change the curve to custom. In the mini curve editor, add a point in the middle. Set the in value to 0.5, out value to 1. Select the end point, change the value to 0. With this custom curve setup, the value will change from 0 to 1 and back to 0 as it reaches the end. Expand the expression modifier. Switch to the number out tab. Change the number expression to N1 plus N2. N1 is the final Z move, N2 is the dynamic offset. Play the clip, and we now have the dynamic zoom out and in effect in the transition. If you feel the move is too much, you can decrease the anim curve scale. For example, 0.6. OK, this looks good. If you want to know more about the expression modifier, you can go to page 2690 in the reference manual. If we pay close attention to the beginning and ending of the transition, we can see some blended areas of the two clips. You may find that is okay. For a quick transition, they are barely noticeable. But if you want to eliminate that, you can do that in the Dissolve node. Go to the Modifiers tab in the Inspector. Change the Curve option to Custom. Add a point at position 0.15. Set the value to 0. This means for the first 15% of the transition time, the incoming clip will remain invisible. Similarly at position 0.85, add a point, set value to 1. This sets the incoming clip to full display at 85% and hides the first clip completely. Alright, the cube transition is now done with the DVE nodes, 
and it's a lot faster than the previous one that was created using 3D tools. I also like the brightness change as it transitions. One last thing is the reflection of the cube. Drag a merge node from the toolbar and insert after the media in one node. Branch the media in one output and connect to the merge node as foreground input. In the inspector, flip the image vertically. Move down the image until it's below the first one. Something like this. Lower the blend, 0.3 looks good. Make a copy of the merge node. Paste an instance. Shift drag and insert it after the media in 2 node. Connect media in 2 to the foreground input. OK, we now have done the transition using different methods, we can switch the output and compare results. When connecting the 3D version, it runs at about 10 frames per second. When it's connected to the DVE version, it runs at 27, 28 frames per second. Visually I can see there are some differences, but for a video transition effect, the DVE node works very well. As usual, I create a transition template for you to download, the link is in the description below. In the template, I include both the 3D version and the DVE version, with the default set to DVE. And also I add the option to change the rotation direction. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.